The anti-government protests in the Republic of Kenya have taken are in the second week. And the new entries in that protest is the diaspora community in the United in, in the United Kingdom, British. And I want you to, to look at this video where they stormed the Kenyan embassy in Britain. The numbers keep growing, keep swelling by the minute. And we are in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Kenya who have said in a loud and clear voice that Ruto must go today, not tomorrow. So guys, viva. Keep on the good fight. Guys, this place is still just rocking. We've seen the cops coming in numbers now. Because they've realized that there's a potential situation developing here. I don't know whether they've been told that uh, the Kenyan embassy is under siege. But it looks like uh, there's an escalation in the police presence. They are guarding the doors to the embassy entrance. But we are generally peaceful. We are demonstrating in a very peaceful manner. The numbers keep growing, keep swelling by the minute. And we are in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Kenya who have said in a loud and clear voice that Ruto must go today, not tomorrow. So guys, viva. Keep on the good fight. Guys, this place is still just rocking. We've seen the cops coming in numbers now. Because they've realized that there's a potential situation developing here. I don't know whether they've been told that uh, the Kenyan embassy is under siege. But it looks like uh, there's an escalation in the police presence. They are guarding the doors to the embassy entrance. But we are generally peaceful. We are demonstrating in a very peaceful manner. The numbers keep growing, keep swelling by the minute. And we are in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Kenya who have said in a loud and clear voice that Ruto must go today, not tomorrow. So guys, viva. Keep on the good fight. If you can check just like U.S., by the way, <laughs> the police... The UK police were even asking what's going on. And I, I'm, I'm a bit shocked. Didn't, in Kenya, you need to notify the police. Kenyans need to notify the police. You even, even Kidiki said you need to tell them the routes. You, you need to do a lot of reports so that you are given security if you want to protest. But that video in UK, those people are not... Um, they did not tell the police. Yes, apparently they, they didn't tell the police. They were just peacefully protesting. And when the police came to inquire, they told the police to go and Google. Those are Kenyans that are protesting and they are joining uh, the Nairobi protest in solidarity with what exactly is going on there. So this protests... It is now unstoppable. Or, or rather it has gotten to a situation where you can deploy the police in Nairobi. You can control the crowds in Nairobi. But it is not likely possible to control the crowds outside Nairobi. Critically, I may want to tell you the, the Nairobi protest today subsided, but the public and, and, and Nairobi was contained. Of course, the capital cities where there is state house, there's a parliament and different government establishments. But it, in Nairobi it went down. But you'll realize that in other cities, Mombasa, which is there, partly Nakuru, 
the Eldoret, Kisumu, Migori, and other areas. So it went down in CBD, Nairobi, today, because that's where the government focused and concentrated the military deployment and the police. We're told of three layer security. But you can see it now spreading to other areas and the signal by the UK. Now the UK is doing the protest after the US, Oman, and there was also parts of Italy. So it's, it's part of the debate that is currently going on. Protest, pro, protesters in Nairobi embraced the uniform men here. So the act of, one, one thing I'm, I'm paying attention to is the diaspora community involvement in this protest. By the way, if you want to, if you want to, if you investigate Kin, you'll realize, you know, in that Twitter space last night, there were 120,000 Kenyans. In fact, it even, it even surpassed, at one point, it got 130 Twitter space. 130k people that were contributing towards this. And quite a number are outside the country. Put Vaseline or any other form of loop. Fuck Ruto. Fuck Oscar Sudi. Fuck Mandago. Fuck Governor Chelilim. Aka Kotimoja. And the reason I'm saying this is because the events today, the events today in Eldoret, the events today in Eldoret marks the symbols of a coward. And that is Ruto. He's talking large on the TV. He's talking large on, 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 uh, on press conferences. While his hometown is erecting wheelbarrows all over the town. His hometown. He has sent his goons, his, his minions. The minions of Oscar Sudi, the minions of Mandago, the minions of uh, Governor Chenilim. He's hired some local oases to go and uh, chant. Chant uh, local in, in, incantations in town. Uh, they are spilling milk all over, uh, calling people. I, I don't even want to say much. Because if that person is really genuine of what he, he is saying, if that person is really genuine, that's he will have avoided all these kinds of things that he's planning in Eldoret. He knows that he's naked in Eldoret. He knows that he's naked everywhere. He knows that he's not wanted in Eldoret. That's why he's doing this kind of shenanigans, whereby is parading people now in town. Don't come for Mandamano Kesho. We'll be there with you. To Tamambia, Lake Kesho, Tuko, Natuko, and it'll be more massive than even ever before. Hmm? Today, I saw Oscar Sudi doing a video that uh, from today I'll stop all charity work. What charity work, Oscar Sudi? What charity work? The same Oscar Sudi will donate 20 million in a church. He will give his other fellow in peace, those now that is now worshipping him, another maybe 5 million or 1 million to donate. Money is goes back directly to his company. That's all they are washing that money. That's all they are. I don't even want to say. The only one, the only thing I want to say is the unity of the people of Eldoret are still behind the generation Z, and you will be there no matter what. The only thing I want to insist is that tomorrow let's show up. Tomorrow let's not lose hope. Tomorrow let's be there. And he like it to take to me a camera parking shot. Nataka kuona David Indi akikimbia. I went to see David Indi. Running 50 meters, let us see him roll down. Let us see him roll down. Make it happen, my people. Fuck them all. Fuck them. That is all, Kimos. Thank you. Quite a number. That anti finance bill protest, reject finance bill protest, has been trending in US, UK, and other parts of the country, of, of the world, for the last one week. So, uh, and, and, and let me just play for you a snippet of um, the discussion that was happening yesterday night. And you will agree, I can tell you that some of those people that were talking there are not in the country. So part of the messaging team that is fueling and is telling the nation, you must come out and call out the president and protest are actually outside the country. Listen to this. So Britain, Kenyans in Britain have joined. 
Kenya was colonized by Britain, by the way. Those are the colonizers. And the King Charles even visited Kenya to stamp their dalliance with President Ruto. So what should worry President Ruto is the diaspora dalliance that is now going down. And what is the impression, what is the implication of Kenya as a country, the image of, the pre of, of our country Kenya in the global stage when the country and when the world is actually turning against us. I want to give you a very interesting uh, development I've, I've been listening to and one of our subscribers was telling me here. He's in, Dub he's in Canada, yes, he's in Canada. He was telling me that, uh, Kevin, you know in Canada, um, the, way thing, the, way, the way people operate, the culture in Canada is different than any other country. In fact, he was telling me, the humanity culture in Canada, you cannot compare with any other world. That the most philanthropic and was saying, I think that was, was, telling, was telling me, and that is why the protection of human rights in Canada, yes, I think that would say the protection of human rights in Canada is top notch. And that is why you see when Miguna Miguna was, um, when Miguna Miguna was abdu went through the abduction and all the violation of his rights while in the country, Canada has been his home and Canada was a very soft landing for him. If it was some other fringe country, they would have uh, not even agreed to give uh, for, for Miguna to stay in that country. But they, they have, they said, adherence to their law and of course the protectionism of human rights. And telling me, if you do your investigation, many Kenyans that are living here after their rights are violated and they're looking for countries they can settle and work, they're preferring Canada. So my viewers in Canada, you can tell me about that. Then why he was telling me this, he's giving me this story that that move by Kenyan police to go to Haiti is not sitting well with many people in other countries. Uh, the gentleman who was talking to is telling me, I stay in Canada, but I work across the world. So I will find myself in Italy. I will find myself going to uh, Australia. Each month he will find himself walking to, he's telling me Italy, Australia, I've been to German, uh, Hungary, I think he said, I think he's on diplomatic front. And he was saying that when everywhere he's going, when he's into meets Kenyans or even people who are not Kenyans, but people who know Kenya, have ever visited the country, because sometimes your first conversation, you meet someone, and you say, ah, I'm so, so I'm from Kenya, I'm from Kenya. You, why you'd say I am from Kenya is because you want to know whether that person can relate. That's the point of relation first. I can, especially even if you find a black person. Let me say not black person. If you find, if you meet someone and you just feel, oh, you can establish contact. Then whenever the discussion about Haiti pops up, people get irritated. And he was telling me that if there is something that is affecting the image of the country, Kenya is that of that Haiti mission. That Haiti saying that Haiti thing is not is receiving condemnation across the world. Whenever we go, when people hear about Kenya sending troops to Haiti, and why? Because of what happened in this country more than 17 years ago. People read books. People read journals about the history of our police force since 1992. So and when people have read and really captured and documented and have seen those things, we have our Kenyan police have a very bad image outside there. So it was telling me that the image of the country Kenya was really hurt by Ruto sending police to Haiti. Why, is, why, am, why am I bringing that story? I'm telling you that because one thing that was coming out is the diaspora involvement in this should worry any other person in Kenya Kwanzaa. Because the image of Kenya out there, even by the other acts, some, it was telling even this American thing, 
oh, America, IMF, World Bank. Those things, people read, people read those stories. And some of those European countries do not subscribe to the IMF and the World Bank. And the world is also changing. They don't even like the US. So whenever Kenya seem to be, you know, fumbling around with those countries, Kenya is losing its stake out there. And so, we put up some six factors where the diaspora involvement in the Kenyan protest, the diaspora community getting involved in the protest is a big blow. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our videos. I want to share a message of condolence to our young brothers and sisters, or mothers, or fathers, the patriots who've lost their lives in the protest in the last two days. We are also standing with their um, um, community, or standing with their families. May God give you strength during this difficult time. Um, I understand quite a number of people were watching. I saw a comment sometime, and um, was time Kevin are watching. We are home, we are trying to do something to bury one of our kids that we've lost, and people are so angry. Even if you see some of the videos that I've been playing for you, parents are very angry, people are crying. And those who are still in hospitals, yeah, I realize some are in the hospital, hospital bed. And they're looking at our videos. Yeah, they're looking at in those beds, they're looking at our analysis, looking to what's happening in the country. Yeah, the case is so that we are also in solidarity with you. We believe that uh, the doctors will do their best. Those who are in need and those who are in need can be able to get help. I want to ask you to reach out because there is a kitty to support those who are there. I've seen Hanifa running with it. So come out to hospital, even if you are in some other part of this country, even if you are not in Nairobi, because I realize some people are not reaching out and people don't know. If you are in the five counties of Busia, Siaya, where, like keep it anywhere, and you are in a hospital bed, and maybe you suffered on this protest and you've not gotten help, just get, put your comment there in the comment section plus your number. If I see, and if you can get someone who can get my number, if you have my number there, you can reach out so that I can also forward because there is another kitty that is running, uh, I think done thing by Hanifa, to support and has been asking for those who are in hospital beds outside Nairobi to reach out. I'll be able to forward your name there and the details so that you can get the support uh, that is needed. Now, why the rest for a community involvement in this protest is a big blow, is a big blow. Number one, Kenya depends on FDR, foreign direct remittance. By the way, foreign direct remittance is not, it's not necessary. It's, it's, it, it, it's part of the remittance that that the diaspora community can even defy. And it's in form of cash coming home and investments home. When our colleagues who are out of the country are feeling the tension with them. By then they don't have the ground, the feel of the ground. They, they may not have the real picture of the ground. But when they are feeling this, do you think they can come back and think of even putting an investment here? But the ones that can come here and invest, build a house, establish something, establish a company there, and through those establishments, that is how the country is getting some taxes and also Kenyans are getting employed. So that is why their, 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 their involvement in the protest should worry any sensible government. Number two, that would be a source of funding or resource mobilization for anti-Ruto movement in the next election. Let me tell you, Fundraising, uh, during electioneering period, you will see politicians, you know, flying out of the country, coming back with mopped up um, foundations. And, and those foundations, they are saying they want to do something, they want to create one or two. 
those foundations are funded and the resource mobilizations from out of the country. So there is something building that in 2027 you must change guard. In fact, the truth of the matter here is that President Trudeau's headache now is not even dealing with, I don't know, protesters here and there, no. The protesters, you can deal with them by sending the police. But on August 2027, you have an election to face. And the person that you sent police to suppress and be able to muzzle the silence, that person will meet you in 2027 general election. An election is going to be there. You will agree with me that one of the reasons that um, even gave Uhuru Kenyatta a hard task in 2017 election was the activities of NASA and how the violation of human rights by the time NASA was protesting. So you could see the way the public was moved up into to remove Uhuru from power in 2017. And I do agree that by all means, there was every reason for Uhuru to enter into an agreement with Raila. I, I, I believe there was every reason because um, that election was not one of the easiest. So even this one, it is this diaspora audience that are going to fund, are going to fund any movement to bring Ruta from power in 2027. Number three, it is going to awaken the diaspora vote. I know uh, that vote is normally not very big, normally not very significant, but there are so many Kenyans out of the country. And um, you, uh, I tell you, I think a recent tally was, I, I show, I think some, some data was... Um, but there could be more than 2 million outside. Kenya. Yes. Could be 2 million outside Kenya. And this is Kenyans in Af other African countries and Kenyans in Europe. A tune of 2 million. In fact, more than 2 million. And just a paltry 3% or 1.2%. Paltry 2% or 1% of that diaspora community participate in an election. Now, the 2027 election will see maximum participation of this group. And <laughs> let me give you a good example. Look at, uh, look at the numbers in the last general election between Riley and Ruto. It was Chibukati announced some 100,000 votes or so. What, what does that tell you? Is if the turnout, even by the diaspora community, comes to close to around something like 500,000, with other local dynamics, the election, that election, this 2027 election is going to be the most difficult one for President Ruto. In fact, someone was saying that uh, when the guy is asking, where did the rain start beating us? I feel the rain started beating them in Bomas. You cannot win an election and have all that dalliance as you purport to then just within two years, everyone else hates you. It's not normal, by the way. Within two years, you are fighting the deputy and that is not together, I don't know who, and, and the whole country is against you. It, it, it's, it's not normal. I think even if Rigadi was asking, that Rigadi was, Rigadi was asking a very pertinent question. There is a problem somewhere. Now, this is also painting a negative image on government. Lastly, or rather, not lastly, but another factor we are also doing is we are killing our tourism industry, which is a big economic blow. Yeah, people are saying, oh, I'm not leaving that country. And some of these things, especially violation of human rights and the tax protests, are affecting even competitiveness of our products in the shelves. Someone goes and gets a competitive product, a Kenyan product here and another one from another country here, from Africa, and then say, oh, Kenya, no, I'm not buying that. And that is very rampant. Oh, someone's telling me, that is very rampant in Dubai. Oh, I'm not buying that. Buying this. I don't want Kenya to get the taxes because the people are complaining about misuse of their taxes, so I don't want them to get my money. And that aspect of killing the image of brand Kenya in the global stage is also having a big impact. So, thank you, guys. Uh, let's meet in the next.